summer in Newfoundland. It's mid-August and the weather has been sizzling with hot sun. Saku and I have been off the beaten path for 10 days on an expedition that may last another week or more. We began at the ocean, climbed a fjord of near 1,000 feet and have been walking up the beautifully undisturbed Grey River ever since. The shoreline has been getting more challenging by the day, but it's all been worth it. Our next goal is the giant meal peg lake. From there, we will follow another river towards the end point. Little portage now around a big rock or two. It's either this or get wet. So, we're on a moose trail. Blow down everywhere. Had a boy, Sack. Find your way, kid. Here we go. Back to the gray. It's another hot, suffocating day here. But that's it. You gotta work through it. And uh, we're just gonna take free pump breaks. Every 10 or 15, we're sitting on a rock. Saki, buddy, you're on the move today. I can't keep up with you. You're like the bullet. So she's, uh, she's opened up now to a bit of a steady here in the upper Grey River. So I'm going to try to walk around it. I can almost paddle it in a raft, but I just don't want to mess with it. If the going's good, I'm just going to keep walking. Uh, <clears throat> and it's all flat up here now. We're kind of in the plateau area of Newfoundland. It's all marshlands. Hence, there's been a lot of flies the last couple of days, but it hasn't been, you know, too bad. We've got through it. Uh, in the evenings the mosquitoes really come out right before dark when it cools off but yeah it's all good during the next couple kilometers we trudged over soggy grounds as the Grey River headwaters approached despite hardship we made good time and it would only make supper taste all the better Soon we arrived at a steady, which finally called upon the services of our inflatable raft. Time to go for a paddle, sack boy. We're going to give this steady a whirl, aren't we, Sack? That was nice. Shaved off about a couple kilometers. Now it's kind of, we can't paddle through any of this stuff. Uh, so it's another two kilometers to what looks like the next steady that we can paddle again. Uh, so I don't know, I'm probably going to keep the raft inflated and drag it behind me through some of this alders and grass and hopefully the bush doesn't get too thick. If so, I might have to deflate it. Where's he going now? He's after something. Chasing the scent. What is it, Zach? What is it? Is it a duck?
Good boy, Zach. Let's go. Come on. Little midday boil up. Zach's chilling. First uh, significant pond extension here, the Gray River. So uh, we'll get in some more paddling. Going to be tricky getting out though. It's not. It's a bit shallow over here, so I got the raft behind this rock. We'll go out through a bit of this deep water here, uh, dodging these rocks, and try to get out through here. And hopefully, we won't uh, be striking bottom too much. Yeah, we got a good pace going here uh, today. So if all goes well, we should be at Meal Peg Lake later on this evening. So we're right around here. And we're looking to get up to Put Ops Dam here on Meal Peg Lake uh, this evening, right? So this is how I've been navigating. Got it on front so I can see it as I'm going. And that's kind of how I've been getting uh, through the woods since I left at the start of this trip. Just kind of following my nose. Uh, when we're on the river, of course, we're sticking to the waterways on the map. And when we were walking the hills at the start of the trip and up over the fjord, I was looking for big hilltops on the map, big things that stood out, and I'd walk in that direction, or certain ponds or lakes along the way, or streams or rivers. Uh, and every now and then, just to make sure, I'd take out my GPS. But uh, that's how I get around. Don't really use the compass at all. Uh, it's more following my nose, and that's what works for me. Rocks everywhere. Just taking our time, slow and steady. Wins the race. Hey, Saki. Alright Zach, we're going to meet up over here bud, you're going to walk, you're going to swim, whatever you can do, okay, got to hop in the raft, it's too deep to be walking over there, I'm going to go around that rock, that a boy Zach. Good boy today, Sacky boy. Good boy. You're a good boy today. You're a good boy every day. Sacky, we got a bit of raft and left to do tomorrow, but. Not very long, a few kilometers, that's it. So, another one bites the dust. <laughs> we had a bit of trouble finding a campsite there. We, uh, we fell a few kilometers short on meal peg because uh, the upper reaches of the river got tangly and there was a lot of rapids we had to go up that I didn't unload the raft, I just dragged it up through the rapids, it was the easiest way, but it took longer. That's it. 
uh, no big deal. But trying to find a campsite was rough. So it was almost dark. It was 8.30 by the time I found one. I pulled into two spots and they were hopeless. So we came in now and we're, we're right on a moose trail. <laughs> but it's nice, flat, and uh, it's kind of opened up. So I think they'll give us the benefit of the doubt uh, and leave us alone. I'm getting a bowl of pasta now. Saku's all fed up in the bunk behind me. Uh, lovely sight, lovely night. Uh, yeah, that's it from us today. Loons are at it again, old sacky boy. Okay, so uh, it poured pretty much all day from uh, from about 9, 8.39 this morning, right up until 4 o'clock. Uh, it's coming up on 5 now, and there's still a scattered shower. So we held tight. We'll get the meal peg tomorrow. No big deal. So uh, I want to get a fire going now. We were just hanging out, lazing around uh, as it pelted rain, watching loons out there, loons were going crazy, but uh, I wanted to come out here now and get a fire going again, and I had one going earlier while it was raining, uh, but I had the wood before it got wet, now everything is soaked, so what I've done is, I don't have a saw with me, all I have is my, uh, I got my axe, and I have my, well, my multi-tool for cutting, for cutting things. Uh, so with the axe, I cut down some dead trees, uh, some hard dead trees, not rotted ones. And uh, <clears throat> I just pretty much hacked off some big slivers. And with those slivers, I made them into smaller ones uh, with the knife on my multi-tool. Then I went around collecting some spruce twigs. Uh, the ones that are like at the bottom of the spruce trees, they're dead. Uh, they're sheltered from, you know, e sometimes even the heaviest of rains because of all the boughs above. So I did the best I could to find dry ones, but some are still damp. Uh, they're real tiny, the size of matchsticks, most of them. So all I, all I did, or, you know, when I got them, was I just, I do this and I give them a shake for, you know, 20, 30 seconds. I just last one in. And uh, that gets out <coughs> some of the moisture. And uh, anyhow, I'm going to start a fire using everything I have here. <coughs> everything I have. Uh, I also got some smaller twigs to put on top after I put the splits. 
uh, but these are damp too. Anyways, I'm using a match. Let's see how it goes. You want to space these out a bit. Oh. So a bit of airflow can get through. You don't want them too tight together. You don't want them too loosely apart either. Anyway, that should be good. bit damp. Come on, take it. Take the flame. So when you get a bit of a flame going, start adding the tiny splits you made. These splits are nice and dry. Shavings, I guess we'll call them. struggling <laughs> but I think I got her I could have stacked the spruce twigs a little nicer I was a bit messy with that and I almost paid for it if that was my only match I would have paid the price would have had no fire hey sec but I think now we're good I figured there was rain coming, uh, so I should have had some dry stuff under the tarp there, but I got lazy. That's what happens out here. You pay when you get lazy. If you don't do it when it's dry, well, you got to do it when it's wet, and it takes longer to get a fire going. Uh, and that's the way it is. But I knew it was going to be wet, of course, because my in-reach in has weather updates. But, I'm going to start adding these twigs on now, the smaller ones, and mix in a few of these bigger splits. But there's another reason why I knew it was going to be uh, wet, or we're going to have some, you know, some not great weather. And it's an old trick I learned from uh, a trapper friend of mine when I lived in Labrador teaching in Cartwright back in 2015, 2016. Uh, I went out and spent several weekends on the trap line with a with a with a trapper who was who's you know was at it for over 40 years. Uh, anyways, one of the tricks he showed me was look at airplanes when they're flying overhead and he said when they're flying and there's smoke coming from the back of the plane you can see it in the sky uh, the weather's going to be good weather's going to be good most most times uh, but if you see no smoke from the back of the jet it means that there's a low pressure system coming bringing some weather whatever it might be rain snow etc so two days ago, I see the jet coming by, the first one of the trip. I've been watching them, and they've all had smoke behind them every day. And two days ago, it wasn't a trace of smoke behind the jet. And what do we get two days later? Rain. So believe it or not, uh, I've, it's, I've experienced it a few times now. It's worked. It's, it's been truthful for me. Although I have my weather thing, but if I was ever in a jam and my device wasn't working or whatever, it's one way to figure out uh, the forecast. So, anyways, a little trick for you. I'm passing it on from the trapper who passed it to me. God bless his heart. Uh, Wayne Learning, yeah. 
he passed away a couple of years ago now, but he was a great fella and uh, gave me some, some really valuable advice that I'll keep with me for the rest of my days. So yeah, thanks Wayne, old buddy up there. Hey Zach, and Zach's thankful for the warm fire. So am I. And now we can cook up some supper. All right, just cleaning up the house here now this morning, getting ready to go. She's in a bit of a mess, a couple of days spent here. Kettle's on, I just had a cup of coffee. Bowl of oatmeal's up next. Saku had a bite. And uh, off the meal peg we go. Not a bad morning out there either. The rain has ceased. Ah, it's going to be a good day. Just about ascended the uh, the Grey River now. What an experience it's been. It smell meal peg. It's not far away. Looks like we made her, Zach. This way, buddy. Come on. Let's go. Come on. All right, me and Zach, you just made it to Meal Peg Lake. Two hands from Shea Heights. What do you have, boys? This is it. Oh, yeah, fellas, up for how long? We're up for a week here. Up for a week. Yeah, a couple big trout cat. Who got the big trout? Yeah, <laughs> wicked. We're gonna see that in a bit. Good afternoon, very much. Geez, yes, absolutely. Thanks. I'm pretty thirsty. It's been a been a few days. <laughs> yeah, wicked. The boys spot here. What's the name on it? Rod's place, is it? Wicked. Thanks boys. We'll have a chat then I suppose, will we? Take a load off. Didn't expect to see anyone up here. Where's meal peg? Straight ahead. Yeah. There's the dam. Straight ahead. We just came through the bushes straight over there. And then geez, I heard the generator going. And we struck gold. <laughs> My lens is a bit steamed up there. What's your name again? Dylan Wiseman. Dylan Wiseman. Look at that. I got a. What are the trout already, Dylan? Dirt trout. What are they? Dirt trout, I think so. Dirt trout. Mud trout. Dirt trout. Dirt trout. Nice mud trout. Yeah, mud trout, <laughs> brook trout. But it's nice. When did you catch that one? Um, yesterday, I did. Good work, my son, good work.
come and have a flick in Neil Peg Lake. What do you think, Zach? What do you think, Todd? for one. Zach. After some hard luck with afternoon fishing, the boys paid a visit and went out for a spin to try their own luck in Meal Peg Lake. It was great to see locals getting out and enjoying the beauty of our backyard, especially the more easily accessible areas like this one. Then, just before sunset, I myself stopped out on the rocks and gave it one last go before the night fell over us. It's a nice brookie. Looks like the first keeper to trip to me. <laughs> yes, sir. It's a nice one. <laughs> Yee-hoo! There we go. That's why I came to Meal Peg Lake. Dandy one an ish. Landlocked salmon. Me and Zachary are going to eat well tonight. So what I'm using is some artificial bait. Of course, been in here now for, this is day 12. It's kind of hard to carry around live bait uh, when temperatures are, you know, a few days close on 30 degrees. They for sure would have died. So. I use a treble hook sometimes with no bait, and that works. Uh, but right here, I got an artificial worm. I got a Canadian tire. It's getting dark here now. But, uh, got, I don't know, I think there's 10 of them in a pack. <coughs> Gulp, they're called. Anyways, they work well. Fish are biting now. Put down her earlier. I only managed a little small one. Put them back. Now it looks like the big ones are coming in. There's thunder kind of shooting off in the distance there. We got a few pecks of rain a minute ago. Not sure if we're going to get dumped on. We'll see. Zach, we got a feed of supper, bud. A few fish, eh? Look at that, some flesh on it. It's gonna be tasty. Going in the frying pan now. Throw a few steaks in the frying pan. Add a bit of water. Give them a little boil first, and then I'll fry them up with some oil after. Once I get the bones out, we'll fit two in their sack. Sack's watching the boys out in the boat now. They're just coming in. <laughs> I'm gonna get me supper, and uh, I'm probably gonna pop up to the shed now for a bit of cabin party. Some old classic country tunes. It's a 
program that comes on Saturday night here in Newfoundland and you know hang out for a bit before we come back down and hit the bunk. But first, that feed of fish is going in the belly. Well, Psyche boy, looks like he's done. Time to give her a try. Oh, yeah. Little camp spice on top, you can't beat it. You can't beat it. Come here, Sack. Come over here. Good boy, here. Try a piece. Hey, good boy. Go on, Sack. Finish it up, buddy. Go on. Little mud trout. So I've created a, a new pen style for maximum ventilation. I don't know how they managed to tear it perfectly like that. There must have been small rips before or something. That's all right. We'll get close to home or closer. Leaving Neil Peg, I take note of the poison that's been left behind over the years. It's enough to turn your stomach and is seen too often. Lack of respect and appreciation is to blame. Soon, the whole woods will look like this if people don't smarten up. On our way out, we roll over the Beta Spear Hydro Road. This leads to the closest community of Millertown, 80 odd kilometers away. The powerful generating turbines here are no stranger to us. We've seen them on previous trips and are aware of their big contribution to our province's electrical needs. The next and final episode will follow us down the home stretch where new hurdles await. Join us then as we wrap up this expedition traveling through the woods and waters of Newfoundland. Look at those.